everybody, welcome to Grace Tree. Hi there. We have with us again today the author of one of the best-selling books in Christianity history, The Harbinger. Woo! Rabbi Jonathan Cohn is back with us today. But the true church, those who stand strong, we are, God is taking the church and bringing it back to its original form. What's that? It's not the status quo culture. It's a radical faith. It's the, it's the counter culture. It's a prophetic faith. Wow. It's, the, it's the underground faith. It's the, rat, it's the on fire faith of Paul and Peter. Yeah. That's what he's bringing it back to. People say, well, I don't want to hear about the last days. I don't want to hear this message. I don't want, because I'm going to worry. No. Even if the world's on fire, if the world goes up in smoke, we're going to heaven to be with the Lord forevermore. Yes, yes, so he said, yes, fret not. Yes. America's falling. America is losing its preeminence is lo all, in every way, morally, spiritually, and then economically. Ultimately, it's, it usually starts economic, and then military comes after. But we're already watching these things happen. We're already watching. You know, and, and so it's all, I believe that's all coming according to end time prophecy. You have... Uh, written and, and spoken in fact i believe it's in the mystery volume yes uh the mystery concerning the talit which yes. I, I have <laughs> one here and uh this is an amazing uh garment could you yes take time today yes. and explain that there's a mystery there <laughs> yes it's it's and it's it's a beautiful one you know a very beautiful one you know messiah what did he what did he look like we don't know exactly we know he, he looked he would have looked jewish and had a beard you know that um, what did he wear? You know, often you see him wearing red. You know, you often see it for different reasons. But we know something that he did wear. We know something he wore because every Jewish man was commanded to wear this. In, in the gospel, remember the, the, the gospel where, the, the famous story, of course, where the woman with the, 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 the hemorrhage goes up to him. Yes. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be healed. Now, the way that's translated is that, okay, what was that about? It's a hem of garment. Why? What's, a, what's the thing about this hem of the garment? And that, but it wasn't just the woman. If you read on in the Gospels, it says that everybody who was sick was, running, was going up to him to touch that same hem. It wasn't just that woman. It says everybody was doing that. You can read, and, and as much as they touched, they were healed. What's the hem of the garment? It's not just a hem. This is a kind of an example where because the church got separated from its roots, we lost something here. And what is that? Well, what it is, the word in Greek is, is kraspodon. I'll, yeah, it's yeah, now that's the, that's the tzitzi. Well, so yeah, the word kraspadam is used in the Septuagint when God commands Israel, you will put on the edges of your garments, you will have four corners, you will have, the, it's called, there, there's, it gives a Hebrew word or two Hebrew words, it's translated into Greek as kraspadam. What they touched was the corner of his garment, you know, the, the corner, the, the, the sacred fringe of his garment called the kraspadam, okay? What is it about this kraspadon? What is it? Well, God commanded the Jewish people to wear it. So it's the, it was the, at, he had, there are four corners. When Messiah walked around, he would have these fringes and he would have the four corners of his garment. The four, you could touch it. Now the word kraspadon is actually found, or, or the Hebrew the, is the word kanath. The word kanath is found in the Bible. Where? Where is it found in the Bible? It's found in the Holy of Holies. When God says you will put the, the cherubim will be over the mercy seat, will be over the ark, it says what it says, and their wings will be touching each will be touching each other. The word in in Hebrew is kanaf, which means it's the same word. In other words, the the word that Messiah had was also the Hebrew word for wings. Wings. Wow. He's wearing wings as the wings of the cherubim. The wings of the cherubim. They were guarding the presence of God. Well, Messiah is the presence of God. Mm -hmm. And around him are wings, actually, literally. And, and not how many wings? Four. How many wings of the cherubim? Four. Oh. Four wings of the cherubim. And so he was, he's the walking presence of God. He's the portable, holy presence of God. And all around he has the four, it's the same word in Hebrew, four wings. And the thing is that not what, where, what were they over? They were over the mercy seat. That's where you received mercy. The people touched him, touched the wings, oh. and they received oh. mercy. They received oh. blessing. They received healing. They received all the blessings of God by touching the wings of God. And, you know, in, you know, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the, uh, the ark, it was like this. So, but you take it and go like this, and then you have the four wings that were on Messiah. And so, so the, the, the first thing is that. That's, that's the part of the mystery of his garment, the wings of God. 
But it goes more than that. When, when man was banned from the Garden of Eden, what he, he left, they left the Garden of Eden, and what was, what was stationed there to stop man coming through? The cherubim, the cherubim, the, with wings. So not only that, it's like he's wearing, the, he's wearing these, the wings of the cherubim, it's the way back to Eden. He is the way back to paradise. He's the way back to healing. He's the way to get out of the curse. Touch him and the curse goes. Touch him, it's like you're going back to Eden. Through him, the curse is gone. The infirmity is dried up. The crippling is gone. The emotional things are gone by touching the wings yes. of God. Yes. The wings of God. Yes. Yes. And yes. now yes. here's another, another mystery of it. We just touched on, the, touched on things here. The beautiful book of Ruth. What happens oh, is, is, is Boaz sees Ruth clean, gleaning the corners of the field, and he says to her, Blessed are you who have taken refuge under the wings of the God of Israel. The wings, the word is kanaf, same thing as the talit, same thing, wings. Later on, the Gentile, Ruth, finds Boaz on the field sleeping, goes down, sleeps with him. I mean, sleeping down at the bottom. He wakes up, and he, she says to him, you are a goel. You are the redeemer, the kinsman redeemer. You are the goel in Hebrew. Spread your garment over me. What the Bible says he spread over him was the kanaf, the wings. He spread over Ruth. The same word of that Messiah read. The moment he spreads that over her, she's no longer an outsider. She's no longer considered Gentile. She's no longer cursed. She is now not a Moabite. She's a child of Israel Woo! under the wings of the Redeemer. The wings of so the wings of the Messiah is walking around with his garment to spread over. It's, it's, the, it's the symbol of the wings of God, the covering of God, of Boaz's covering. And so the, the outsider comes, touches it, they're, they're brought in. For instance, the, Lord, your, the Lord is your Goel. It says Redeemer in English, but in Hebrew it says Goel. That means the kins, that means Boaz. That means the, the one who redeems your life has been so messed up, but he takes it and he totally redeems it. You were barren, now you have children. You were, you were lost, you were outside, now you're inside. He's, he, he's the one who just, not just redeems you, he marries you, and then he, <laughs> then he becomes one with you and makes your life fruitful. That's what it says in Hebrew. You are my Goel. But the Goel spreads his wings over, spreads that, that's what Messiah had. That another thing is that it's, it also means the corner, the corners of the garment. What did God say about the corners of your field? He said, when you, you leave your corners for the poor and the stranger, you leave yes. them so yeah. that they can eat. They, and so here Messiah, the, here Messiah, it's the corners of his garment saying that his... His life is open to the stranger, open to the needy, open to that. And what it says is that the way we have to live our lives is you can't just live to have enough for yourself. You have to live to have extra so you're a blessing to others. Yes. You cannot yes. just live for yourself. You have to live to be a blessing to others. Yeah. Have extra and God will bless and God yeah. will bless. Yes. But here's, the, here's the, the almost last thing of the, the mystery here. It says at the very end of the Bible, at the end of the Hebrew Scriptures, it says, it says, last words, just before the end, it says, and for you who fear the Lord, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings. Yes. In his wing, healing in his wings. Except in Hebrew it doesn't say that. It says, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his kanaf, his craspid, or it would be craspidon. In other words, yes, it's wings, but what did it say? Look at that. It's saying in that very word that is the healing, the Son of Righteousness, ah. Messiah, his very corner is the wings that it says in that will be healing. He will rise ah. and there will be healing in his wings. I mean, and so people were healed by the wings of the Son of Righteousness yes. rising. That is so and so, amazing. And so every time you read all those scriptures now, when you read those scriptures where it says, God says, you know, hide me, you say, hide me under the shadow of your Wings, that's Kanaf, same thing that he wore. It's, it's wings, but it's also that. You, you, you will, I will shelter you under my wings, under my wings, that's that. So the, the, all, the whole thing, bringing it home, is God came all the way from heaven to earth to our lives, not so we'd stay distant, but so we would, he could become touchable. Yes. God, we have the God who's become touchable. Mm. That yeah. not only he touches us, but you have to touch God. We have to touch God with our need, our infirmity, our shame. Touch him with your regret. Touch him with that brokenness. Take it. Don't keep it with yourself. Touch him with it. Touch God. Touch the wings. Under the wings, there is healing. There is redemption. There is restoration. There is acceptance. There is freedom. There is blessing. All yes. the blessings yes. of his love under yes. the shadow yes. of his wings. Yes. Amen.
Oh, I love that. I'm going to tell you, that, that is, that you is know, so, the shame, the, the guilt, all of that, all of that, the, the things that, that you've done. I mean, that, you touch them <laughs> and, and, and literally it. it's gone if you'll allow it to be. You know, it's right we, there. We, yeah. we, yes. we have a, a, a store actually that has their, their main stores in Jerusalem. And uh, th we have the Talits. And I just thought while you were talking, I, I had asked earlier if we, we actually, people ordered all the Talits we had when we, on the trip, you know, and the people just loved them. And if you want to see one and have one, and, and I love I love it. I, when I was there, I, I got to pray with it and, and pray under the, mm -hmm. it, I felt like I'm in a prayer room yeah. when you, you put this over your yes. head. Yes. Don't you kind yes, of feel I like you're that. in a, yes. a spot That's of right. prayer with the Lord. But uh, if somebody would like to order it, you can. And uh, today, wh what we've been doing this week is, is uh, we're starting our new semester of our college in um, our school. It's, it's the school of, of, of broadcasting to and media to reach the world. Mm -hmm. And so we've been taking media uh, outreach. some Start small outreach, offerings yes. this week to just keep the school going and we scholarship a lot of kids and but but it's it's a, to me one of the most important part of our ministries is the school and like today if you give a $25 gift for the school I would just like to give you a little love gift really from Jerusalem and from the rabbi the uh, this to I want to just send it to you and thank you for helping the school today with a gift of $25 but also, I want to throw in today, on today's show, I would like to throw in, because we have it ready to go now, the Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, the special sermon he brought live to our, our studio audience, Find Your, prophet, your Prophetic Destiny. And uh, this message, Lori, yes. you came home, you were talking about it. Yes. And this message is what I want to do. We are raising up a group of kids, just like this kid right here. He's being ordained in, in a few weeks to the ministry. He spent five years. And you know, and forgive me when I talk about our students, most of our students are hardworking. Look at, Dale Hill said this girl right here on this camera. Jillian. Hi, Jillian. Are you still married? Yeah, I is that she's her? a newlywed. Yeah, she a, just got married just a few weeks ago. She came to school. She found a husband here in the hills. <laughs> and, and, uh, but she works. Dale Hill was one of the great directors of all times. Great producer. He said, he picked her. He said, I want her. She's one of the best camera people I've ever seen. And so I want, I want some people to say, Jim, I want to just give that $25 gift today. I, I, we want to start a fund because we still want a scholarship, but we're asking families to help because it's not expensive to come to our school. No. And we feed them, we, we house them. Yeah. And, For what and you're doing here, truly, the education that the students are getting, the experience that the students are getting, and really just the exposure to real media. It's not just, oh, there's a camera there and this is how you should run it. But these students are truly behind the cameras. They're in the audio rooms. They're in the VTR rooms. They're in the offices with you learning. And we're sitting there by your side and with our teachers learning and understanding how to actually run a television program, how to actually run a network. And that's not hands-on experience you will get anywhere else because that's the transparency that's here and that's really nowhere else. So here we have the, uh, the Toledo, I want to just send it to you and I want you, this is what, this is the message for our school that you brought, Rabbi. Mm -hmm. And this message is an amazing message yes, and I want the, uh, you to have this, finding your prophetic destiny. That's what I want for every kid in this school. And I'll tell you what, I've got dozens and dozens of graduates that have found their prophetic destiny. Is that right? That's exactly right. And, and I want to say this really quickly. The type of students we're looking for, maybe you're a young adult right now. We're looking for young adults that are, are in love with Jesus, that want to change the world through media, and that they want to discover what their calling is in broadcast.
You see, we've got to have students that know they are called of God. And they're not willing to give up. And I'll tell you what, it's time for mom and dad and grandma and grandpa to get tough. It's time for kids to get tough. It's time because we better be strong because all hell is breaking loose. That's right. And it's time we do something. And we're trying to raise up an army of the Lord. And uh, so today's offering for $25, we want to send you this message that inspired this today. Finding your prophetic destiny. And uh, thank you for preaching this great message, Rabbi. All right. <clears throat> On today's broadcast, you have to share about Dave Wilkerson. Mm -hmm. I don't know why and how God raised up Dave Wilkerson through our ministry. I mean, I've followed Dave my whole life. And he went to be with the Lord a few years ago. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, I, I think through... John Shorey, yeah. uh, God speaks to him. The book's in his pocket, right. the blood moon night. He finds it, and all of a sudden, <clears throat> we have books. The books, the, as soon as we found the book, he starts reading. The book goes to like, what, two, three thousand oh. dollars for Overnight. one book? What? Yeah, overnight. Overnight online. on, on uh, the um, Amazon. Amazon. Yes. And, and so it was like every single book of Dave Wilkerson, God has used on our broadcast from the prophets to bring in word. And it's like they wouldn't listen while he was alive. I believe more people are beginning to hear Dave Wilkerson's prophecies. Mm -hmm. And now God's speaking something through you. Mm -hmm. But you've got one last mystery to share on today's broadcast. Would you, okay. can well, you do that? One thing, one thing that we will not have time to go into, because I'll just mention oh. this. No, wow. it's, it's, just, it's, it's just really too much. But is the Isaiah 910 metamorphosis. And mm -hmm. what is that is there has been from, from, 9-11, there has been this, this pronouncing of this prophetic thing over America by leaders that was the, the words that brought judgment to Israel that have started the day after 9-11 when Tom Daschle proclaimed it from Capitol Hill, but it has not stopped. It has yeah. continued. But it's not just that it's continued. It has evolved or progressed. Yes. There's been some changes in it, and the changes are very significant. And it's been a progression that even with the president, if you take when the President Obama became, came into office, his, he, at least three times he's issued this, one form or the other. The last was just recently this year. When he first gave it, he spoke, if you look at the tense, he spoke in the future tense. Uh -huh. We will rebuild, we will come back stronger, this whole thing. He did it at the, it was actually in the, the, the state, the first time he ever appeared before a joint session of Congress, this is, he said the center of his speech was, I want every American to know this, and then here he goes. So much so that if you look, it's Isaiah 9, 10, if you, if you Googled it on, your, on, the, on the, the web, and you said, we will rebuild, you, would, you used to get Isaiah 9, 10. But after he made that speech, instead of going to Isaiah 9, 10, what ancient Israel leaders, what they said, led to destruction, it took, his words replaced the words of the ancient leaders of Israel. His, we will rebuild. He said it, but it was all future tense. The next time, the next appearance, we won't go into detail, but I'll yeah. just say, the next appearance is when, I remember in ancient Israel, when the leaders, when they ushered these, they, they issued these words, and in Hebrew, eight words, the whole vow is eight Hebrew words, Isaiah 9, 10, in, in Hebrew, we will reveal. The president goes down to ground zero, and he goes to the harbinger, the tower, and he inscribes words on the highest beam of the tower. They are there to this day. Yes. Tower of Defiance, and what he writes are English words, eight of them, that parallel the eight Hebrew words of the Isaiah 9:10 declaration. In modern American prose, he writes it, it matches word, it matches, it's at points word for word. But when it appears on the tower, it's not in the future tense. The tense has changed. It becomes present tense. In other words, first, we will do this, which is defiance to the Lord. Yes. Second one, three years later, he's saying we are doing it. We're fulfilling the vow. We are, that's what's on the tower. We, present tense, we are doing it. So the first, the second, the last time, and this is, it, get, it gets it involved, so we can't, I can't do the diagram and all this stuff, but I'll put it on the, it's actually also something I have to put on the, the that will be on the tape. Yes. It will be on the DVDs. On the it will yes. still be done. But the second one's the State of the Union address that he just gave. This is now three years after that. 
In it, behind the, the, the text is continuously Isaiah 9.10. Behind the text. So much so that he refers to even the vow that he made. He refers to it. Except now there's a change. It's not in the future tense. It's not in the present tense. It's in the past tense. He says, now we have fulfilled it. We have done it. At the same time, this year also opened up, January 1st, the very opening day of this year, the governor of New York is being sworn into office. Cuomo is being sworn. He changes the venue. It's supposed to be in Albany. He says, no, we're going to do it somewhere else. We're going to do it in New York City. He opens up the year on New Year's Day inside the tower, inside the Harbinger, inside the tower, and he vows they try to knock us down, we come back stronger, Isaiah 9:10 in the tower, on the opening day of 2015, wow. New York. So what I'm saying is there's a whole in exact progression that, in other words, the, the ominous thing is we're there now. In other words, we said we'd do it, we'll defy you, we are defying you, we have defied you, we have completed it, we have done it. That's where we go going into 2015. Put that with all the other convergences. So... What's coming next then? I mean, it, it's... The Harbingers, you know, as we've talked at certain times, I come back with a report, I, they have not stopped. They've continued. And I'll just touch on the last two, but there's okay. something more on the, the last one that just happened before I, a little while before Ooh. I came out here. And the first, just to bring it up to speed and link it even to other things. The one, the two are the tree of defiance, of hope, and the other is the tower. You know, the tree that was planted at ground zero, which was the tree of judgment. We will come back stronger, the Erez tree, planted on ground zero where the sycamore was struck down. What the, what the Jewish people, what the Israelites said, this is, our, this is a symbol of us coming back stronger. As we, I shared after, this is after the book, because when, when the book came out, it, had just, it was planted, everything was going well, but then according to the Bible, one of the signs of judgment is the tree shall wither away. The tree of hope, representing America, withered away, withered away, no matter what they tried. I found out they actually tried to put new soil. They replaced all the soil, and it still withered away. And so to, one of the signs in, you'll see in the prophets, I will break off the boughs. I will break off the branches. You break off your glory. They broke the tree of hope, got its branches broken off because it was diseased. No matter what they did, broken all off. The president came down to ground zero, reads a, re, gives a speech with a psalm in it, a very strange thing to read because the psalm says, the one that they chose for him was, Come and he's in ground zero and he's saying, Come and see the desolate the devastation God has done. He reads it. And oh. then and then he, then down that same psalm, he's gonna read a blessing, which says, He and God breaks the bows and arrow, he breaks the bow, brings peace. He changes the word, and I believe it's just like the harbinger, nobody planning to do this, nobody knows what they're doing. Changes it from bow, B O W, to B O U G H bow. He breaks the bow, which is the judgment sign of the Bible. He will break the bough, the branches, which right across from him is the tree with its branches broken. He says that when the White House actually releases the text of the scripture, this is in print, from the White House, they change the word from, from bow, bow and arrow, to bow, judgment. They actually change the scripture. It means something totally different in Hebrew, judgment. So there, that tree, and then a year ago, one year ago, because when I first came here, it wasn't the case. Uh, one year ago, the tree of hope, representing America, its glory is destroyed. It falls, is destroyed, and the day it's destroyed is a Hebrew holy day. It's destroyed on Passover last year, and that the night of its destruction, the moon turns red. The night of its destruction of the harbinger comes the first blood moon. Oh. It ushers in, the harbinger's fall ushers in the blood moons, which begins Whoa. then, that same night. And now we're coming to the end of that. So you've got two yes. harbingers. You have that linked to the, to the moon. Well, the other harbinger is, the, of course, the tower. That's the big one. That's what's the final one, the tower. I won't go into all of it except to say for those, because those who know here, this is where they say we will rebuild stronger. America vows to come back stronger, rebuild as ancient Israel did. The ancient Septuagint says not just we will rebuild. It says we will build, come let us build a tower. The tower, they get it from Babel. They, the rabbis put Babel on Isaiah 9, 10. That is this tower of defiance, which exactly what, I mean, John Kerry, Secretary of State, he said when he was a senator, he said, we must build that tower stronger to show the world we are defiant. Defiant. So it goes up stronger, been building, and then we, we mentioned the president comes down, he inscribes the vow basically on the top of the tower of defiance, and then 
when he's being inaugurated the second time, which I was here when we, that election happened, that was a tipping point. And what he does is he, the president chooses a poet who then from in the middle of the inauguration in Washington, not only does the president enlist the entire nation into ending the biblical definition of marriage in that speech, first time ever, but also the poet that he chooses says, bring, gives a poem of praise, not to God, but praise to, of our, to our own hands. And he says, we pray, the works of our hands, he's praising, giving thanks. And the final thing he says, he speaks of the harbinger at the, at the inauguration, that the tower going up, that, that is jutting it to the heavens, he's saying that the heavens yield to our resilience. He speaks of the harbinger in terms of Isaiah 9, 10. Then, after that, the progression, they tried to build, they put the spire up, they're going to put the spire up on the tower to complete it. The day they chose was April 29th, the same day that the cross went up on Cape Henry when America built its first, its first object on American soil, when they dedicated America to God, Cape Henry, April 29th, same day they're going to build that, they're going to put the, the spire on the tower. But that day the wind blows and will not, it, it will not, they will, well, the wind will not let them do it. So they can't put up the spire on April 29th. They, they put it two weeks later, it goes up. As it goes up, two things happen. That hour, the scandal breaks across America about the IRS persecuting Christians and, and pro-Israel groups, breaks in the same hour. And that day, the sun is darkened over the tower. The sun is darkened, solar eclipse. You've got the, blood, you've got the red moon on the oh. other harbinger. You've got the sun being darkened on this harbinger. On this one, it happens that way. Now, the last thing is that, that the Shemitah opens up and as the Shemitah opens up, the tower opens up. And I told you we, we touched on that here at the same time. But just before I left, uh -huh. just before I left, I mean, maybe a week ago, actually, before I was traveling, the, the, they opened up the, the top floor. They opened up the top floor, finally, of the tower. On Friday, I believe, they opened up. Sunday comes a storm, and that top, the top of the tower that they just opened up to be completing is struck by lightning three times. Three times. In fact, we may have a picture. Wow, look at that. That was just, it was struck three times, right, right after they opened it, right after, just before we left. That tower is the completion, is the embodiment of all the harbingers, begun with that stone of judgment and, and, and coming to its head. So that's where we are right now. Now, um, one of the things I want to just, one of the things we were watching, and we're not only really watching this moral collapse in this year, but as we said, as they call evil good, they call good evil, persecution. Listen to this statement. This is recent. Listen to the statement. Or I'll just say, deep-seated religious beliefs have to be changed. Oh. Now, that would sound like who would say that? Joseph Stalin? I mean, a communist. You know, deep-seated, meaning the Bible, religious beliefs have to be changed. Not Joseph Stalin. The one who said it was Hillary Clinton. Oh. Just recently, running for president, she oh. said deep-seated religious beliefs have to be changed. Why did she say it has? Now she's, she's talking about the Bible. I don't remember any American leader ever coming to this point to be able to say something like that. The, the religious beliefs of Americans have to be changed. Why, she said, so abortion can expand. Oh, oh. my gosh. Oh. Now, listen to this statement. This is, this is a different kind of statement. I believe marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. I have in my, my, in my life, I have defended marriage. It's the fundamental bedrock principle that exists between a man and a woman. It is for millennia, been ra for the raising, socializing of children, in which they are going to become involved. Who said that? Hillary Clinton. This is back she said then. that 2004. 2004, she said, it's the sacred bond of marriage. Now it is, now she says it has to be, that has to all be, cha all be changed. Uh, this is what she originally said. Isn't but that shows you this is how fast it's happening. Now, we are watching, I'm going to say, you know, very shortly, I've said it a few times, I told you that I was called to Washington. I actually stood on the steps when I saw these people in sackcloth and ashes on the day that the Supreme Court heard the case. If this goes the way, if marriage is struck down, this is gigantic. This is major gigantic, not just for, not just be concerning immorality, but also concerning persecution. Once this happens, if what is immoral becomes institutionalized, becomes legitimized, then what is moral will become delegitimized, will become persecuted. Now, I mentioned something, now I'm going to bring it to David Wilkerson, but I mentioned something a few times ago where, uh, where the actual, this is ominous, but the actual White House lawyer 
said to the Supreme Court during that day, said that, yes, if this happens, basically, in effect, we will go after the religious or Christian schools. Tax exemption stripped. Then it will go to, the, to ministries, tax exemption stripped, because you're haters, according to this, if you don't go along with this, and then churches. We will be right back after this special message. I believe a great shaking is coming, great shaking that will change things, affecting America financially, economically, and more than that, and will affect the world. I believe it's unwise not to be ready. You know, if you're going to drive a car, don't you need fuel? Yes. Well, make believe you're a car. <laughs> what is your fuel? Food. If you don't have food, you die. That's as simple as it is. It's going to be life and death, and that's why bread's going to take a whole day's labor just to get one loaf of bread. That's but right. be ready. My Jewish friends have an expression. They'd rather be a year too soon than 10 minutes too late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Our big survival food offers are back. We have teamed with leaders in the survival food industry to bring you a new variety of food while still holding down the cost for you. And so we have now this brand new food for a year for you yeah. and a year for, for two. two. And the time and then, of travel, which is seven years. And so it's food. all ready to mm -hmm. go now. Each of the foods we now offer have been taste tested to make sure you get the best tasting quality food that you expect from this ministry. In each of these offers, you will receive buttermilk pancakes, maple brown sugar oatmeal, chocolate pudding, morning moose whey milk, creamy chicken and rice, hearty vegetable chicken, chicken noodle soup, creamy stroganoff, fettuccine alfredo, italiano marinara, black bean burger, creamy potato soup, corn chowder, macaroni and cheese, banana chips, instant white rice, and instant mashed potatoes. Don't wait until it's too late. That's yes. right. Don't wait until it's too late. Yes. Be prepared. You can receive the tasty new foods year for you offer for a donation of $600 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 1,096 servings of food. The retail value of this offer is $1,150 and is at a cost of just 55 cents per serving. You can receive the tasty new foods year for two offer for a donation of $1,100 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 2,192 servings of food in eight buckets. This offer has a retail value of $2,300 and is at a cost of just 50 cents per serving. You can receive the tasty new foods time of trouble offer for a donation of $3,500 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 7,672 servings of food in 28 buckets. This offer has a retail value of $8,055 and is at a cost of just 46 cents per serving. We can only guarantee the prices for a limited amount of time, so get this new food now. Call 1-888-988-1588 or go online to jimbakershow.com. You can also write to Jim Baker at P.O. Box 7330, Branson, Missouri, 65615. Thank you for your prayers and support that helps keep us broadcasting around the world. Now listen to what, now I was looking at the vision, listen to what David Wilkerson said. Now again, he thought the timing was going to be then, it wasn't. But listen to what he says. An antichrist spirit this is in 1973, will enter the hearts of certain men in high places, in government and in the judicial system, causing these officials to harass independent churches, missionaries, and ministers. I see a time coming when nearly all evangelical and missionary projects, all religious radio and TV programming, all incorporated missionary societies will be so closely monitored, questioned, and badgered that they will be cautious of expanding in any area. There is coming an attempt to tax churches and church-related organizations. Atheist forces, with the help of the American Civil Liberties Union, will push the matter all the way to the Supreme Court. We will eventually have taxation of churches. It will begin as an in insignificant kind of nuisance tax, but will soon burgeon into a monster-sized tax that will push some independent churches and missionary societies near bankruptcy. Church-related businesses will be taxed first. That will soon be followed by taxation of all church-owned properties, including parsonages. Church buildings will be exempt. The IRS may one day become one of the most powerful weapons against the church. It would then be possible 
for government, government agencies to maintain a stranglehold on churches. Government agencies are soon to become delving into the private books of almost every nonprofit religious organization. Those who do not comply with stringent guidelines will be forced to shut down. There will be no recourse. This is 1973. It's happening now. Yes. Happening now. Wow. Now, I'm going to get to something else that he said, but let's get but that. That's linked to collapse. I want to get, so I want to touch on the Shemitah yes. and what, where it is. <clears throat> the last two cycles of the Shemitah have been the most exactly uncannily exact. And I believe, I believe they have a clip, of, with just a short clip of that. If it's clip number three, I think, but it's of the last growing manifestations, if they have that. The collapse reaches its peak at the end of September 2008 with what becomes the greatest single day crash in Wall Street history. That morning in the New York Stock Exchange, the opening bell refuses to sound. Even Wall Street takes it as an omen. The stock market crashes over 700 points. On what date did the greatest crash in Wall Street history take place? It is September 29, 2008. But the ancient biblical calendar holds a different name. The greatest stock market collapse in world history takes place on the 29th day of Elul, the exact day appointed from ancient times for the nullifying of the financial realm, the wiping out of financial accounts. Elul 29, the day of the Shemitah, the sign of judgment against a nation that has driven God out of its life. The judgment that specifically strikes the nation's economic and financial realm. The two greatest collapses in stock market history up to those dates each took place on the same exact day on the ancient biblical calendar. And they just happened to each take place on the precise biblical day that's specifically ordained to touch the nation's financial realm and to wipe clean its financial accounts from ancient times, the day of financial nullifying. And it's not only Elul 29, but it can only be one Elul 29 in seven years that can constitute the day of the Shemitah, the day of nullification. So on which Elul 29 did the greatest stock market collapse take place in the year 2008. It happened on the once in seven years, Elul 29, the exact one that constitutes the day of the Shemitah and the greatest crash of 2001. When did it take place? It happened on the once in seven years, Elul 29, that also constituted the Bible's day of the Shemitah. So when all across the world, observant Jews are symbolically canceling out their debts to each other, the greatest wiping out of financial accounts in history is taking place on Wall Street and sweeping across the globe. According to the ancient mystery, the financial nullification has to take place seven years apart from the one before or after. So the two greatest financial nullifications in Wall Street history up to their dates take place seven years apart not only on Elul 29, but seven years apart, seven exact biblical years apart, down to the exact season, the exact month, the exact date, the exact hour, the exact minute, the exact second, the exact closing bell. No human hand in the world could have orchestrated such a thing. It required the working together of every financial transaction and interaction in the world. It even required that 9-11 had to have happened exactly when it did, as it was 9-11 that caused Wall Street to collapse in 2001 on the exact ancient appointed day. Powerful. Powerful stuff. Yeah, that's from the... That's from the Mystery of the Semedia Unlocked. Unlocked. That's from the DVD. Yeah, so the, the last two are that. Now we're coming up in two months to the next one. Now the next one's coming up. It's close. Now I want to. Now I have to do my normal thing. Yes. And just so everybody, no, we're not saying God has to do it on the date. God has, does not have to do anything. I can come back, and it was a very nice day, and everything was was all that. But it could, and I believe we should be ready. But either way, if it happens then or later, I believe strongly a very great shaking is coming to this nation that will involve the financial realm, economic realm, and more than that, and more than that, even to changing courses of history. So it could begin here or whatever, but we need to be ready. So now when's it going to happen? It's going to happen, Elul 29 falls on September 13th. 
September 13th is Sunday. There's no market open. But the last day that the market is open, that will be frozen at this date, will be the date of 9-11. Will be the 14th anniversary, two Shemitahs from the day of 9-11. September 11th. That's Friday. Friday, just before, Coming up. before you go into Elul 29, will be frozen at 9-11's number. You know, which actually happened on 9-11. 9-11 happened, the markets stopped, was frozen at 9-11, the 9-11's number, that went right into the, the Elul 29 opening the next week, and it crashed from 9-11. Actually, I'm throwing this in, this is just extra, but, <laughs> but the, the, the number that was frozen for a week from 9-11 was the number, the stock market was at 9605. That's 9, and 6 plus 5 is 11. It was, came out to 9-11. <laughs> that, was, that was the number, frozen. So it's going to be again 9-11. Now, what's going to happen on that day? Well, one thing we know is going to happen. On the day of wipeout of Lul 29, the sun will be darkened again. It will be the eclipse of the sun oh. happening on the day of wipeout, on the day of nullification, on that time. Now, I want to share something. This isn't that David Wilkerson now. Now, listen. Listen okay. to what he said. Okay. This, was, this was, I mean, in the vision, he talks about an economic collapse. But this is something he, I think, came out in the 90s, though. But listen to this. Very, he says, soon a European or North African or Eastern nation is going to default in its international loan. Now, I'm not, now I, we don't know this is the case, but in the news, you've got Greece going on there with this. I'm not saying it's the case. People then, are pulling their money out yeah, of the banks in Greece yeah. as yeah. we speak. Yes, that's right. I mean, they may even get a deal, but we don't know. And then, then what happens, with, he says, then what happens within two weeks, well, he's, he's, he said Mexico will default. About two weeks after the first country goes bankrupt, when, which money is owed to European banks, German, which is part of this whole thing, yeah. Swiss and French banks, but a second country is going to go down, probably Argentina or Brazil. Two weeks after the first country goes down, Mexico will, will default. When the banks open the next day at 9 in the morning, $15 billion an hour is going to be withdrawn from our American banks. They're going to be running our banks. The Arabs, all the Latin American countries, they're going to be running our banks. Before the day is over, the USA is going to have to declare a bank holiday. From the time the first country goes down, you'll have two weeks to get your money out of the bank. Now I'm going to give you a word of advice. When the first country goes bankrupt, you get every dime you have. Church, get your money out of the bank because there's going to be a bank holiday and you won't be able to get a dime for six months. Now, of course, there's going to be a, res there's going to be a restoration, but the nation will never be as it was again. Now, I'm, this is, I'm not saying it has to be. That's David, Dave speaking. David Wilkerson, but it's just very interesting. Mm -hmm. They're talking about defaults and things like that. I want to just touch on two things, and one is the super Shemitah, or the Juba, prophetic jubilee. Now, I don't know if we have time to do yes, it. Yes, we to, have to, time. You'll do it? Okay, it won't be Your that Your time much. is my um, time. Okay. All right. We have, I believe, clip number two, which is the mystery of the seventh Shemitah. Let's just talk, because this is also, this cycle is starting shortly. It's the first time in 2,000 years that the land is being restored to the Jewish people. The year following the Shemitah was September 1917 to September 1918. The Balfour Declaration takes place in November 1917. Thus, the land is restored to the Jewish people in the year following the Shemitah corresponding to the Jubilee. It's a prophetic jubilee, and according to the mystery, the Jewish people now would return home to the land they had lost, to their father's possession, to their ancestral homeland. Everyone shall return to their possession. The mystery of the jubilee concerns the seventh Shemitah. So what happens if we move forward in time from the Shemitah of 1917, 49 years to come to the seventh Shemitah. What is the seventh Shemitah? It brings us to the Shemitah of September 1965 to September 1966. The year following the Shemitah would begin September 1966 and end September 1967. Did anything significant take place within that year and within those dates? Any event of restoration? The answer is yes. According to Bible prophecy, the Jewish people have to be restored not only to their homeland, but also to their ancient holy city of Jerusalem. In the midst of the Six-Day War, Israeli soldiers enter the Lion's Gate of the biblical city of Jerusalem. 
through gunfire, they make their way to the holiest site in Judaism, the Western Wall. There they weep. And after 2,000 years, the Jewish people are restored to their ancient capital, Jerusalem. It happens on June 7, 1967, within the parameters of the year ending in September 1967, the year following the seventh Shemitah, the Jubilee. The seventh Shemitah had ushered in the second restoration of the land. According to the mystery of the seventh Shemitah, the Jewish people had returned to what they lost 2,000 years before, Jerusalem. They had regained their long lost possession and returned to their ancestral home. The two great restorations of the land each happened according to the mystery. The Bible ordains that in the year of the Jubilee, the shofar, the ram's horn, is to be sounded. The first thing that happens after the soldiers reached the Temple Mount in 1967 is that the ram's horn is sounded from the Temple Mount, the sound of the Jubilee. The man who sounds it is Rabbi Shlomo Goren. Rabbi Goren was born in the year 1917, the time of the other restoration. When he sounds the shofar, he is 50 years old, the number of the Jubilee. The mystery of the Shemitah lies behind the two great end time restorations of Israel's lands. Now the pattern and cycle does not have to continue, but if it did, what would be the seventh Shemitah from the last restoration? The seventh Shemitah begins September 2014, goes to September 2015. The year following the seventh Shemitah is that of September 2015 to September 2016. While the cycle doesn't have to continue and nothing significant has to take place, in the last two occurrences, it has meant war in the Middle East, war in the land of Israel, and a war resulting in a prophetic restoration. Wow. I show this for this reason, that it's not only the climax of the Shemitah, it's also the beginning of what you could call the Super Shemitah, or the prophetic Jubilee. Now, again, we don't put God in a box. He doesn't have to do anything, but what it has meant is war. What it has meant is a change in Israel. This is massive. When you take these two things, 1917 was the land. 1967 was Jerusalem. Now what's next? So if this, we have to be ready in either way. So we got all, talk about convergences. We've got all, everything we just said, everything, change, and we have a potential change in world history, even prophecy. It doesn't have to, but I would be ready. Wow. So that, that is from the, the mystery of the Shemitah unlocked. Let me just share one more quick point. And that is that, and this is from, on the, in the teachings, it's the days of the watchmen. We are called in this day to be watchmen. Yes. We have, must be the watchmen. And just some keys to be, I give the keys about how to be a watchman. But the key is this, it doesn't matter who you are, man, woman, child, doesn't matter. We are called to be watchmen, we must stay on the walls. In other words, we must stay on the ramparts. In other words, we cannot get so wrapped up in the world, we cannot get wrapped up in all the details if we're gonna hear from God. The watchmen have to look, they have to stay above the city. We have to stay above what's happening. We have to be in God's presence in order to, to be the watchman we're supposed to be. We have to be on the watchtower. We have to stay in the presence of God or we cannot be watchmen. And we have to be looking, the watchmen look into the distance. They don't, they don't look at everything around, they look into the distance. They look into what's coming. They are ready to what, they are looking that way. The watchmen, they are acting at night. Things get dark, that's their hour, that's their hour. We can't fear the, the darkness because God called us for the darkness. God called us to be strong. We, the watchmen, once they see something, they have to sound that shofar. We have to not be silent. We must sound the alarm. The one of the first times I came here, I went to Branson Airport, and I'm leaving, and I'm thinking, Lord, you know, this is a heavy message. You know, why do you have me doing this? And I open up the Bible. It's, he bombards me, son of man. When, I, when danger is coming, if the watchman does not sound the alarm, I will hold him accountable. I've, I've called you to do this. You must, we are all watchmen. We must sound the alarm. God has called us to be faithful on the walls. And faithful, and that means we have to be in the presence of God. He will not only keep us, but we will be strong for this hour. God has called us for this hour that is coming. And you can share this word with your friends and neighbors. And, you know, it, I, it's, 
all of those speeches are in this video this week. They're yes, all on one, right. one, one new, of the nine. The one. Well, yeah, there's nine DVDs and one, and one of them has all of those speeches on it, plus yes. all the teachings. So the teachings are all in this for a $55 gift, or you can get all of the material for a gift of $100. You That's get right. this, and you get the, the book, The Harbinger. You get the book, The, the, mystery, the mystery of the, the Shemitah. Shemitah. You mm -hmm. get the video, The Mystery of the Shemitah Unlocked. You get you the tales of the wandering prophet, Hugh B. Sen, who had linked rabbi. And what's and worth a couple hundred dollar value and is the whole tour of the Holy Land, yes, volume one yes, and two. Yes, with rabbi teaching. <laughs> he teaches. It's not just all this beautiful scenery of the Holy Land. He's teaching at every stop we make. Amazing piece yes. of material. Be ready. Be ready. Be ready. Would you bless the people yeah, with a prayer? Sure, sure. The rabbi's blessing. <sighs> The ironic yes. blessing, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> this is the blessing for those who aren't here. This is the blessing that God himself wrote the words to. So it's got to be there's something in it. He said, when you give it, you'll place my name upon my people as you give this word. So I'm going to give it in Hebrew, the language of Messiah. My fathers gave this in the temple to the people of God. You are the people of God. Those who are watching, you're born again. You are the people of God mm. with Israel. This blessing is for you. Yes. So yes. I'm going to ask... Why don't you rise and lift up your hands to the Lord and you just close your eyes and receive this from not man but from God as from him. It is his blessing. Adonai <laughs> Vayishmerecha Yair Adonai Panavalecha Yisa Adonai Panavalecha Viasem Lecha Viasem Lecha Shalom The Lord bless you and keep you the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob calls his face to shine upon you, his servant, and pour out his grace upon your life. The Lord God, King of the universe, calls his glory to come upon your life, child of God, upon your heart, upon your house, upon your, the works of your hands, upon your life, that it might glorify him in all things, and the Lord give to you his shalom, life, fullness, peace, all the blessings of his love, Bashem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name that is above all names that are named in this world and in the age to come. B'Shem Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, Or HaOlam, the light of this world, Uchvod Yisrael, the glory of Israel, V'Ari Yehuda, and the lion of the tribe of Judah, in his holy name, Yeshua, we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. God, God bless you. Praise Love you. God. Praise you, Lord. Blessing. Thank you, Rabbi, for being Thank with you. us this My week. Blessing, love you love so you. much. God love bless you. you. We love you, love you, Rabbi. God loves you. you. He really does. Bye-bye for today. Bye-bye. We love you. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, my friend. You were great. You were terrific. I believe a great shaking is coming, great shaking that will change things, affecting America financially, economically, and more than that, and will affect the world. I believe it's unwise not to be ready. You know, if you're going to drive a car, don't you need fuel? Yes. Well, make believe you're a car. <laughs> what is your fuel? Food.
If you don't have food, you die. That's as simple as it is. It's going to be life and death. And that's why bread's going to take a whole day's labor just to get one loaf of bread. Right. But be ready. My Jewish friends have an expression. They'd rather be a year too soon than 10 minutes too late. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Our big survival food offers are back. We have teamed with leaders in the survival food industry to bring you a new variety of food while still holding down the cost for you. And so we have now this brand new food for a year for you yeah. and a year for, for two. two. And the time and then, of travel, which is seven years. And so it's food. all ready to go mm -hmm. now. Each of the foods we now offer have been taste tested to make sure you get the best tasting quality food that you expect from this ministry. In each of these offers, you will receive buttermilk pancakes, maple brown sugar oatmeal, chocolate pudding, morning mousse whey milk, creamy chicken and rice, hearty vegetable chicken, chicken noodle soup, creamy stroganoff, fettuccine alfredo, Italiano marinara, black bean burger, creamy potato soup, corn chowder, macaroni and cheese, banana chips, instant white rice, and instant mashed potatoes. Don't wait until it's too late. That's yes. right. Don't wait until it's too late. Yes. Be prepared. You can receive the tasty new foods year for you offer for a donation of $600 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 1,096 servings of food. The retail value of this offer is $1,150 and is at a cost of just 55 cents per serving. You can receive the Tasty New Foods Year for Two offer for a donation of $1,100 or more to the ministry. This offer comes with 2,192 servings of food in eight buckets. This offer